Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the best way I know how to animate right now in Scratch using code. Now when I say animate, I don't actually mean like drawing out the frames, I mean like the method of how you switch the costume. There's a lot of little issues that pop up while animating that you may have come across, such as weird delays to the animation starting, the timing not looking right, and just overall non-flexibility. Or your animation code ends up looking like this. So yeah, I'm going to be showing you how you can fix that and make it much more clean and you won't even have to use any wait times or anything like that, just one switch costume too. If you're excited for today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. If you're not excited, then still hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, so I've set up an example project to show my issues. So as you can see, when we are not moving, the Scratch Cat does a nice animation. It just kind of squishes. And when we start moving, it is supposed to instantly start doing this walk cycle, which is just the built-in one in Scratch. Now, the issue is when I press A and D, you can see that it doesn't start animating immediately. So here, I'll show you what I mean. It's idling, I press D, and look at that, it's almost a whole second. And same with the transitioning to the idle. As you can see, I'm moving, I let go, and it still does a couple more times. Now the reason for that is because we have the wait time. So we're just saying if the X input is zero, that means we're not moving, then we'll just do idle, wait 0.5 seconds, switch costume to idle two, wait 0.5 seconds, and it'll loop. Then what happens is say we stop moving and X input is not zero, which means this should happen down here, and it has to finish out this loop before it can switch to this. So that's what creates that really horrible sloppy delay. All right, so what we need is a variable that will keep track of our costume. I'll make it a four the sprite only variable called costume. So now all you need to do is set that costume to zero in the very beginning. So we want to pull out a switch costume to block and then a plus block. Pull a mod block in the right side of that plus. Make sure you follow the order I'm doing it because otherwise it won't work. Now all you need to do is we want to take the floor of the costume in the left side of the mod. And that is actually the whole entire piece right there. It's that simple. Okay, so this very first input, what does it do? All it does is it tells the algorithm what the very first costume in the animation is. So in my case, I'm going to start with the idle animation. So the first costume in the idle animation is one. You can kind of see this little number right here. So I will just put one in there. Then this second input, that's the mod, is the total amount of costumes in your animation. So for this animation, as you can see, it goes one and then two. That means that there's two costumes in this animation. So all I need to do is do mod two. Okay, so now all I need to do is is take out this idle loop and put that in the x input equals zero. So if we start the game, it's going to be quite disappointing because it doesn't work. Now the reason for that is this costume needs to change. So all you need to do is change the costume by one in here. So now you can see that in the beginning, look at that, our costume changes and immediately our cat starts squishing. Now that doesn't quite work because it's super fast. So let's just change it by like 0.1 and you can see immediately, look at that, it's slower now because we're changing it by a slower number. Okay, so now we can do the same exact thing for the walking. So go ahead and delete this walking and duplicate the idle script. So remember, the first input is the very first costume in your animation. So for me, the very first costume is number three. So we are going to do three and then the total amount in the walk animation is just two frames. So I'll just do mod two. So now if I put that in the else, as you can see, there's no wait times, but as soon as I press A or D, it starts walking. And as soon as I let go, it instantly turns to the idle animation and it's super quick and snappy and it always works. And you could even maybe change this costume by 0.1 inside of here and then change it by a different number inside the walking. So maybe for the walking, we want it to happen fast. So we change it by one. As you can see now, when we walk, it changes really quickly. And then when we stop, it goes to a nice slow idle animation and it seamlessly transitions and it always looks good. So maybe I'll change this to like 0.2 and there you go, that looks pretty good. And just so you can kind of see my other code, if you want to copy it, all I'm doing is in the beginning, it resets its position and then it forever sets the X input to the A minus D key. So you can see when I press D, it's negative one. When I don't press anything, it's zero. And when I press D, it's one. Then I just change the X by that X input times five. So it moves it. And then last but not least, 
properties, I just flip the direction so it faces right to left. And that's how I get this X input. So it's just saying if we're not moving, idle, otherwise walk. So this little algorithm here is actually really cool. It's a really neat little algorithm. So I'll kind of explain the basic of what it does. So first of all, it just adds one to all of this stuff. Then it takes the floor of the costume. So what a floor does is it basically rounds it, but it always goes down. So what I mean by that is if we were to take the floor of 10.8, say, it's always going to round down to 10. Even if it's 10.99999, it'll still round down to 10. So it will take the floor of the costume and then mod 2. So what does a mod do? A mod is basically a divide block, except it'll output the remainder. So if I take a number and it's not even, say 15 divided by 2, it will output 7.5. However, if I take 15 mod 2, as you can see, the remainder is 1 because 7 and 7 is 14, so that's even, but then there's a remainder of one. So that's what the mod does, is it just gives you the remainder. So with all those pieces and parts put together, it'll take the floor of it, which is 10, then it'll mod two, so it'll get the remainder, which is zero, and then it adds one, which ends up outputting one. So costume one is this. Then if we change the costume by 0 0.1 and it's 11.1, .1, as you can see, if we click on this, it's two now. So it'll go to two. So that's kind of how the algorithm works. So that means that if we change the costume by a bigger number, that's why it'll go faster is because it won't have to do any of the floor stuff. So it won't ever round. So it'll just kind of skip over all that stuff. But if you change it by a decimal number, that's how the animation goes slower. This is a super reliable and expandable method. I've used it in my Night Ninja game and Griff Patch uses it in pretty much all of his games and actually I was looking at one of Griff Patch's projects and that's where I saw this little algorithm so credits to him because it's a awesome little algorithm that you can use and it takes out all the annoying delays and weird artifacts of using wait time. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it helped you out. If it did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.